What's going on everybody? I'm Jason, Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and today we're back on the mud mower. Hopefully today we'll get some redemption and get this thing figured out once and for all. So in the last video you saw this thing was running way too rich. Now, I'll cut a clip in of what I'm talking about. There was literally fire coming out of the exhaust pipe like a torch. So that was pretty disappointing and pretty annoying. However, I tried to figure it out. So here's some possible causes of why that could be. Now, one, too much fuel pressure. I'm running a 12 volt fuel pump. The first one I got from Amazon. The second one I got from the local auto parts store because I burned up the first one. The one on the left is what came out. I got that from eBay. I think I paid less than $12 for it. I want to say it was like $11 and change, maybe 27 cents. I don't know. Anyway, I think it was free shipping, but there wasn't a whole lot of information. It didn't say how many PSI it put out. It mentioned liters per hour, whatever. When this thing, when I turned this thing on, you could literally hear it in there. It, was, it would shake, it would vibrate the gas tank. It sounded like it was doing a lot of stuff, a lot of work. And it filled up the fuel filter by the engine real quick. So it was moving a lot of a lot of fuel. Anyway, I burned it up by putting a restriction ahead of it, and it quit working. It actually turned back on earlier. I, maybe it has a thermal switch, but it sounded real rough. Like it, it, I think it's just done. So anyway, I didn't want to wait for another one. I didn't want to order another thing. So I found this at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. It's an Edelbrock fuel pump for a carburetor. And as you can see, its max is 3.5 PSI. Reason number two is the jetting is way off. Now, I bought this Makuni carburetor from Performance 670, and I can't imagine that the jets would be so big that a constant flame comes out of the exhaust pipe. Number three, a combination of both. I also kind of doubt that. I'm really heavily leaning on too much fuel pressure. But one more thing that I saw on the exhaust header wrap back when we did the custom exhaust pipes was there's a, there's a note that came with the exhaust header wrap with a message to quote racers that because you do that to your exhaust, you wrap it, then it creates more vacuum through the carburetor because the exhaust has more velocity leaving the system. So exhaust wrap causing more vacuum, hence more fuel. I don't know. I'm kind of doubting on that one too. Here's the current setup. So I've got my fuel tank. I've got a 12 volt fuel pump, electric fuel pump. And the current one puts out, it says, 2 to 3.5 PSI. And then it goes straight to the carburetor through a filter. My plan is, and I thought about this a week ago, is to put a T-fitting at the carburetor and a return line to the fuel tank. Now, last Sunday, I follow Robot Cantina's channel, and he's doing a Predator 670 in an old French Renault car. Now, he threw a little schematic on the screen for a second, and if I can find that, I'll cut it in. But he's gonna go ahead and put one of these manual fuel pressure regulators in the, in the loop, in the system. So by putting this in here, I got a one to six PSI, mechanical, I mean, manual fuel, fuel uh, pressure regulator, as you can see. And I'm going to put that thing down to about one PSI. So it causes just a little bit of resistance from the fuel going back to the fuel tank in this loop. And the carburetor should take just what it needs without any major pressure at the needle and seat. Because that's what I believe is happening. I believe that the pressure from the fuel pump is just surging past the needle and seat. And this carburetor supposedly has a needle and seat for a fuel pump, but when they say fuel pump, I'm kind of thinking, looking back, they're talking about the diaphragm type or the pulse pump. So, I believe that I've way overran this thing and it's just creating more pressure in the bowl and pushing more pressure through the jets. I've obtained some items to fix this problem and I'm gonna attempt it right now. I got eight feet of fuel line, I got my T-fitting, had to get a three-pack, that's all I could find on the shelf. 
I got a hose barb that I'm going to cut into the filler neck of the gas tank, hose clamps, and also I was on some uh, Facebook 670 Predator forum and a bunch of guys said that the stock plugs that come in that motor get fouled out real easy and they're not that great. So everyone's talking about getting NGKs and Champions and the head part numbers. I could The advanced auto parts I went to didn't have the NGKs and I saw these on the shelf and they cross reference. They're these E3 spark plugs and they've got like a the old split fire electrode down there. So I'm going to try and go ahead with these. Now I probably only ran this thing like that for collectively maybe an hour-ish. And I know that having that much fuel going through the carburetor and into the combustion chambers ain't no good because it washes down the oil on the, on the walls of the cylinders and it could cause scoring. I didn't want that in a brand new motor so I was very um, conservative on how much I drove this thing and how hard I drove it. Well, because there could possibly be gasoline in the oil at this point from that much gas going into it, I went ahead and picked up a, an oil filter that cross-references with the stock Predator. I'm going to change the oil on this thing. One more thing I wanted to add before we get to work is that I actually contacted Performance 670 yesterday. I emailed them and they responded very promptly. I asked them what jets the carburetor shipped with. He told me the pilot jet is a number 20 and the main is a 250. I don't even think I've gotten into the main yet. I've barely even pushed this thing. I haven't even floored it, not once all the way. So I'm riding on the pilot jet circuit, I'm pretty sure. So I went to Niche Cycle down in Tampa, Florida on their website and I ended up ordering a 17.5 jet, a 15 and even a 10 just in case and I got a new needle and seat just in case somehow I screwed this one up by putting too much pressure through it. The first thing I did was I ran this new hose, this new fuel line, right along next to the other one from here back here to the tank. Here it is. The second thing I'm going to do is route this up behind the body here and I'm going to cut a hole in the filler neck and I'm going to use this 90 degree barb fitting. All right, slight change of plans. I'm not going to use this 90 degree fitting. First of all, it's metric. Second of all, I think it'll be better if we use a straight barb fitting. Because look here. Instead of having this thing way up here and trying to, trying to get that mess, we're going to have the hose come straight into the side of it like that underneath the body. And this barb fitting will be right there. Like that, if you can see it. And that'll keep us out. We'll be able to take the body off of it without ever having this in the way. It'll look better. It'll be clean and discreet. So I got my barb fitting with some sealant on the threads. I got my drill bit, which is slightly smaller than the diameter of the threads on this barb. And if you look here, I took a piece of tie wire and jammed it through a rag and put the rag down on the gas tank so that any shavings from the plastic don't go down in there. Whatever falls in there, I'll be able to get out. So, I got my mark on the fuel neck. I know where I need to drill. That was easy. So I drilled a couple different size holes in it trying to make it perfect to where this, the threads on this bung would grab in the plastic. And I'm just, I mean, it, it's kind of, I'm getting close, but I remembered I started looking through my stuff and I have an eighth inch pipe thread tap. So we're going to go ahead and use this to get it started and make it nice and clean. I got the, uh, the brass bung in here and it's actually pretty solid. So we're going to get the hose connected to it and then we're going to move to the front of the motor. Just like that, there's a shot of our return fuel fitting in the fuel neck filler for the gas tank. Now that I've got the fuel line secured at the filler neck of the gas tank, I'm going to go underneath the tractor here and I'm going to tie wrap that fuel line right alongside of the, the, the other one, the first one, the feed line and work the slack up to the engine compartment. 
But first, it's a little bit hot out today. I need a break. All right, back to work. The return fuel line system is complete. Now we gotta test it. Take a look down here. So my fuel line, the return line comes up with the other line. I got it snaked under this bolt to my pressure regulator, which is set at one PSI. It comes around here and goes to this T on the carburetor. So we're gonna put the battery key in it. We're gonna turn on the fuel pump and we're gonna see it come out in the tank. All right, here we go. I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on. Three, two, one. There it is. That's the return line, guys. So before we start this thing up, which we're gonna do here right now, I changed the spark plugs out. You can see how rich they were running. The one on my left hand right here, I cleaned off with a wire brush last week and haven't started it since. Maybe I started it for a minute, but then this one here, I didn't mess with yet. And you can see how black that is. So she was definitely running rich. Anyway, let's get this thing fired up, take it around and see if it blows flames still. All right, so we just pushed it outside. It hasn't been started in a week. Let's see if anything changed. later.
guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. I think we got the problem fixed. It was too much fuel pressure, and that was pretty obvious. So if anything, I didn't. what I didn't mention was last week, I actually took the needle out of the needle valve and the main needle, and I moved it. I moved it more lean, one notch. I might have to undo that because there's a little stumble now off idle. It might have been just right before. So with that, we're going to think of more stuff to do with this thing. I still got to get tires. I still got to do some more little twe little tweaks here and there. I, got, I need a bumper. I need a hitch. I need a winch. I need all that stuff. But until then, guys, my name's Jason, Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and we'll see you on the next one.